I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. I thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I thank you for your mercy on this word. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I ask, Lord God, that we would begin to see that we are conquerors. That we are prevailers. That we are victorious only because of you, Jesus. Not because of anything that we're actually doing. And I thank you, Lord, that we can come into an agreement with your word. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would bind this word to us. That you would set us free in this word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning. You're awesome. <laughs> in every area of your life, you're victorious. In every area of your life, you're a prevailing force. In every area of your life, because of Jesus. Lord. And I just release over you life, wholeness, peace, health, prosperity, in Jesus' name, in every area of your life. And I got something that just popped up here. <laughs> I don't know why those antivirus programs have to pop up all of a sudden with their little messages. Don't care. <laughs> Pressure when they never tell me anything's there. Glory to God. Glory to God. But in this day and age, we have to maintain an attitude that we can prevail over whatever comes our way. We are under attack, folks. Well, brothers and sisters, we are under attack from every side. And those that don't believe it, they're the ostrich, the proverbial ostrich with their head stuck in a hole. Every area of our life is under attack. Every area of our culture is under attack. Uh, most young people who've grown up in the past, I don't know, 25 years or maybe even 30 years, that went to school and stuff, um, their history's been skewed. Uh, it's been attacked. That the idea of God is under attack. The idea of walking in faith is under attack. Uh, Esau's throwing off his yoke and wanting to put it on us. We are under attack. Glory. We must prevail. We must fight a good fight. We must finish the race. And we must keep our faith. Every man's been given a measure of faith. And it's up to us to decide where that faith goes. There's only, there's only a limited amount of things that we actually own in this world. You might think you own everything around you. But the truth of the matter is the Earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. <laughs> so I'll let the Holy Spirit speak this to you. But the truth of the matter is, is our free will is really <laughs> the only thing that we own. What we what we decide to do with that faith that comes in into us has been placed into us. I guess we own the gifts and the callings of God because they're without his repentance. He is not sorry he put them in us. He's not sorry that I wasted a million years of my life. He loves me and rejoices with me. But we have to prevail when, when we're under attack, when we we're, when we're, feel like we're losing our grip. We have to prevail. If, if, we're, if we're going through things and, and, and we have to say, I can only do this one day at a time. We have to prevail in that one day at a time, that one minute at a time. We have to prevail. It's up to us to prevail. It's up to us to make a decision and to stick with it. Glory, glory. And I got a lot of scriptures this morning. But let me give you my definition this morning. It's prevail. Prove more powerful than opposing forces. Be victorious. We will prevail, but we're only going to prevail by coming into agreement with God's word and what he's doing. When we have, have a personal revival on a daily basis. And, and, and we agree on a daily basis in spite of. In spite of. In spite of. Glory. Glory. And uh, in Philippians 3, 12-16... It says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, 
but I press on to make it my own, <clears throat> this walk, because Jesus Christ made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, <laughs> not looking at the at your past, forgetting about that, that get, there's nothing we can do about our past. Our past is not who we are. Who we are is who we are in Jesus, who Jesus is in us. Glory. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who mature, who are mature, think this way. And if anything you think otherwise, if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. You know, it would be real easy sometimes to just throw my hands up and turn around and walk away from from this. And, and 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 go back to to a life that I once lived. I'm not going back there. I don't have a desire to be that old man, but it would be easy sometimes to do that. I'm I'm, I'm pressing on forward. I'm forgetting about what lies in my past. I I, I re <laughs> I'm not going to allow what I've done in the past to control what I do in the future. So what if I was a, a drug addict back then? God healed me and delivered me, cleaned me up. So what if I used to be a, not such a nice guy back then? That's not who I am now. And think about your past for a second. Your past is dead, gone, buried with Christ. Glory, glory. And it would be easy sometimes to <clears throat> just to give up. But I'll tell you what. If, if we if we will come into agreement with God's word, that's going to be our strength. That's going to be our buoyancy when we can't feel the ground beneath our feet. Lord, let the Holy Spirit uh, enlighten you on this. And in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, I told you a lot of scriptures. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's whatever comes your way. <laughs> Glory to God. And take unto you the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In other words, he's calling us to be intercessors. <clears throat> that sometimes when we go through the things we're going through, it's really not us going through them, it's somebody else going through them on a, <laughs> a, perhaps a much higher scale. Maybe we're just tasting a little bit of what they're going through. Jesus travailed for the whole world. <laughs> he, he took everything on himself. And sometimes the Lord will allow us to experience what somebody else is going through. Not always. But sometimes, and I think for the past few days, couple days actually, I've been going through it for somebody else. <clears throat> I've been praying for myself and for them. It, whoever that person might be, expecting, fully expecting the Lord to speak to me on this. And he hasn't spoke to me on this. Sometimes we go through things and the Lord doesn't speak to us. That doesn't mean <clears throat> that we're, we're abandoned. It doesn't mean we're left alone. 
It just means God's working something out in us. And he may be speaking to us, and we may just not be in the place to hear him. Is, is, does that, does that uh, change our salvation in any way, shape, or form? No, it doesn't. Does that change our standing in, in God's eyes? No, it doesn't. You you have children. If you if, if, <laughs> if your children <clears throat> um are are going through some things in their teenage years and you don't and you're not saying anything to them, you're letting them do their thing. Does that mean you don't love them? Does that mean you're not going to stand behind them when they come to you? Um. Sometimes God doesn't speak where, where we can hear it in our thinking. Or Some people actually hear God audibly. So, you know, where, however you hear the Lord, maybe you're not hearing Him like you would. But I can guarantee you that He could probably be speaking to your spirit. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit, I'm just throwing some things out here, some thoughts that are coming to my mind. But just because we're not hearing from the Lord doesn't mean that He's abandoned us or we've done something to make Him mad. And another thing that came to me yesterday when I was writing my yesterday's blog was we don't always have to own everything that comes our way. It could very well be somebody else. So let, let's begin the prayer for our brothers and sisters. When they come to mind, let's pray for them that could be you know what we're going through could be a call to prayer and that's what I've been doing and I'm not letting whatever's going on around me stop me from walking you know I can I can share with you my temperament's been a little bit askew <laughs> but I praise the Lord that I've been I've been going through it I've been motoring through it I've been just going straight ahead it hasn't been I'm going to look all over the place where, where's God? No, God says go forward. We're going to go forward. Glory. Glory. A year ago, I wouldn't have been able to do the past couple of days' blogs. I would have just had to lift my arms up and say, I can't do this because I feel too, too abandoned and too wicked. No. <laughs> but as I mature, I see that uh, it's not our emotions that, that need to control our walk. It's not what we're feeling that needs to control our walk. It's not what we see that needs to control our walk. It's our faith that controls our walk. And our faith isn't based on anything external. Our faith is based on something known. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. My faith in God that he's never going to leave me or forsake me is really kicking in. I can sit down and talk about these things. I haven't sinned. I haven't been out sinning. <laughs> I've been seeking the Lord. What's going on, Lord? Why am I feeling this way? <laughs> but it doesn't change who I am, and I know that. I'm secure in that, and we need to be secure in that. That's what gives us the ability to prevail is when we don't allow things to, to overcome us. Glory to God. And in Hebrews 12, 1, or 12, 1 and 2, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed, 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 <laughs> encompassed, <laughs> about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Think about that. We've got a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on. And, and, and we do get weighted down with things. But we don't have to allow those weights to prevail. We don't have to allow what's going on in our lives to prevail. What I'm going through today is not the same thing I'm going to be going through next week. I can't allow anything to divert me in my walk, or in this case, my race. What about you? What are you allowing in your life to divert you? Is it, is it your, it, 
Is it your finances? Is it what's going on in your marriage? Is it what's going on at work? Is it not working? Um, what? Whatever it is, the Lord will give you the strength to motor through those things, to push on. The picture I got when, when I said that was of somebody in a 4 by 4 truck in a really muddy, water-filled race just going straight for it man the tires are spinning the mud's going everywhere it's slick out there and the mud is sick and sticky and it wants to suck you in but you keep going because you know you have to get through that mud ball and i've seen that with my own physical eyes i've gone i've rode in four-wheel drive jeeps through this that and the other thing i've done those things i know how it works and I know how easy it is to get stuck. <laughs> I know, believe me, I know. And and but the thing is, is we can't allow whatever's going on in our lives to ruin our walk. And I have to urge you right now and see that you are a prevailer. You prevail over this, you prove more powerful in opposing forces. You are victorious. We are under attack from all sides today. Our belief systems are under attack. Our livelihoods are under attack. Our families are under attack. Our marriages are under attack. Not only from the enemy, but from the world's belief systems. That, you know, there's, there's, there's belief systems, false belief systems out there that say... You were this way. You're going to always be this way. That's not true. I was this way 20 years ago. Now I'm this way today. But if I believe that about that, I would be just like that. Whatsoever a man believes in his heart, that's what he is. And that goes for women and children. And, you know, what are we doing to make it better for somebody else? We have to fight the good fight. We have to prevail. We have to believe. The one thing that we own for sure is our faith. What are we going to do with that faith? Are we going to point that faith towards God? Or are we going to point it toward what we see around us? I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. You're awesome as usual. I just pray, Lord, that this would touch somebody. That whoever's struggling today, Lord God, that they would that they would prevail. That they would see that their struggles aren't really who they are. That who they are is in you, Jesus. And your word declares, Jesus, that your grace is sufficient for me, for us. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness, in our weakness. And that, that by... Coming into agreement with your word, we are going to be stronger. That no weapon formed against us will prosper. And I thank you for this day, today's word, Lord God. And I thank you for, for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. We're building up our most holy faith, Holy Spirit. And I thank you, and I just ask that you just speak this into us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey! <laughs> Get alone with the Lord. I don't know if my guitar's tuned. <laughs> and I'm not going to take the time to tune it before I play. But I just, I really feel like, you know, there's a time of... Be 
complicated. Life's in chaos. In this life, I call chaos. Who do I run to? Who do I turn to? Who do I see? It's you. <laughs> At any rate, let's live our lives. In Christ, in Christ encompassed, enveloped, enveloped, I should have said, but enveloped is, works too. And know that you belong to Him. We belong to Him. And no matter what we're going through, <clears throat> we, we, we can't forget those things because we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. That when we are weak, we are strong. We got to know these things. We have to know these things. We have to know these things. That, you know. Sing with me. God must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do you worship God? Is it, is it for just a couple minutes a day? And then the rest of the time you do whatever you choose? you more than anything. <laughs> I 
I want the Lord more than anything. Let's, let's, let's let that be our cry. And I want you to have an awesome day. We'll see you. Bye. Glory. Ooh. Ooh. We'll see you. <laughs>